to Linen Care series again. And today we're talking about uh, a successful guide in order to plan your laundry in a much efficient way. Now to the outside observer, running a laundry business might seem fairly simple, you know, taking in the dirty laundry and turning out clean laundry. Now it's a simple enough concept, but the reality is that the commercial laundries have to do a lot more in order to just churn out clean laundry. Now, giving us a little more insight into what kind of goes into this whole efficient way of functioning a laundry is Mr. Tim Bacon, the director of Alliance Laundry Systems for Middle East, Africa, and India. So thank you so much, Mr. Tim, for taking time out for us. My pleasure, thank you. Let's dive right in uh, into the questions. So starting with now, when we look at the Middle East and Africa region, what are the kind of key components that should go into while planning a laundry? I think, you know, the, the first thing is, is to separate the different types of laundries. So we have the, the very large scale commercials um, with the continuous batch washers, the tunnel washers. Then we have the more, uh, the smaller to the medium sized commercials. Then OPL an on-premise laundry within a hotel or a hospital or a facility. And then laundromats. Each one has different requirements, but I think the location of the laundry is, is the most, inco most important thing to start with. Either the location within a city, transport routes, ease of connectivity, or location within the building. Um, you know, you, with, with obviously with the pandemic, it's brought more focus onto this, that ideally you don't want to have any cross flow of dirty and clean linen, and you want to keep that that linen flow away from public areas. So the location is, is a critical thing. Um, and then there's equipment sizing. Obviously, you know, we're, we're always constrained with budget. Um, but what we've seen, and, it, and it's really important at the initial stage, is rather be ambitious with the sizing than undersize. Hmm. Because there's nothing worse than having to knock down a wall, add machines, add capacity or even you know, work on double or triple shifts to try and keep up. So, so that sizing is, is um, important. And then what we find, and I'll speak about this a little bit more later, is the environmental area. So not just the, the outside environment, but in terms of planning the laundry to make sure you have the sufficient power, sufficient water, drainage is often overlooked, you know, a commercial laundry can put out a lot of water. Where does it go? Um, and then airflow. Now, airflow is often neglected, but generally in a laundry, a, a tumble dryer consumes the most amount of energy. So the drying process. And whatever you can do to minimize that uh, makes you more efficient, more cost effective. Yeah. So having the right airflow is quite critical. So I think the location, either you know, within the city or within the building, the equipment sizing, the environment, those are the critical things for the, the Middle Africa region specifically that we need to look at when, when planning the laundry. Right. You know, I kind of touched upon the next question where we're talking about infrastructure. Now, infrastructure is an essential aspect of commercial laundry. Now, how are there so many machines out there you know, available in the market? So what kind of makes people opt for a certain type of machine to the other? Yeah, I mean, look, Alliance is, is the world's largest producer of machines. And I think just in our range, there are over a thousand different types of laundry machines. So it, it really is a mind boggling choice. Um, and then of course, you've got other types of manufacturers. I think the, the first thing to do is to look at the capacity of the laundry and generally, in terms of per hour, we would say that anything up to 500 kilograms per hour mm -hmm. should be single front loader washing machines. Mm -hmm. It could be five of them, 10 of them, three of them, but that kind of size is more of a single machine. And then anything over a ton per hour would be a tunnel washer or a, a continuous batch washer. And then there's a gray area between sort of 500 and a ton. And we see both sides. You know, if you put a tunnel washer in, it can sit empty and they really need to be fed to, to make the most. If you've got batch washing, you know, single, single use or, or front load machines, um, then you're gonna end up with 10 of them. 
depending on the textile fit, you know, do you have different types of textiles that can't be put together? Um, that would determine the, the machine choice. So uh, for me, a rough guide is 500 kilos, front load washers, over a ton batch washer. Yeah. Once you've determined which type you're going to go, we then need to look at the heating. Are you going to give the machine hot water? Are the, is the machine going to heat the water itself? And then you decide in terms of the, the process of the linen, are you looking for a lower cost machine, which would be a, a lower spin machine or slightly higher purchase price, but a higher spin speed. And a higher spin speed means less watering at the end. So less tumble drying. So the initial cost may be slightly more, but the, the lifetime cost would be less. Right. I think the, the next thing to consider with, with type of machines is the technology available in the machine. And that's not just having a, a programmable machine. You know, most machines nowadays are completely programmable. And customers often ask, you know, what's, which one uses the lowest amount of water? Well, that's up to the operator. You can use one liter if you want to. It won't wash very well, but, but the machines are programmable. But over and above that basic technology, there's such things as track and trace, where you can prove that a certain item was washed at a temperature for a certain time. Um, there are feedback reports on water consumption, energy consumption. So that is an important decision for the machine purchasers to realize. And, and we often work with a number of hospital and hotel groups uh, to compare properties. So they have one property, which is their star property, um, and that may be using X number of kilo, X number of liters, X number of kilowatts, and use that figure to compare across other properties in a region. And they can quickly identify which ones are working. Um, so the technology is important. And then I think the single biggest thing for us as a, as a machine manufacturer is the total cost of ownership. You know, we go back to that budget cost, which is the initial price. Yeah. And as all of our colleagues in, in, in our laundry business know that over a 10 year lifespan, that purchase price is actually not that significant. When you, when you consider you know, the energy used, the water that's used, the labor that's used. So we try and come up with a, a total cost of ownership for, the, for that 10 year or 12 year, whatever uh, lifespan there is. Right. So those are, those are three things that, that really need to be considered about the, the choice of machine. Right. The sizes of the machine, um, the technology available, um, and then the total cost of the ownership. Right. Now, I've been talking to a couple of service providers and they say a key factor that one often forgets is you know, to pay attention to machine maintenance. So why do you think this is so essential for them and how do you think it kind of affects or impacts the performance of the laundry? Yeah, it, it really is. It, it's like a car, you know? I often say to my customers, imagine your, your big machine that you're gonna spend 20,000, 30,000, $50,000 on one machine, like a car. You don't just take your Mercedes and drive it for 10 years without servicing it, it won't last. And the machine is the same. So um, what we realize over our global um, portfolio of business, the average service cost in the first five years equates to about 2% of the machine value per year with maintenance. Without maintenance, that increases to 11%. So, you know, that's in terms of a breakdown, once the machine breaks down, just the servicing and maintenance cost jumps 9%. Now on a $20,000 machine, you know, that's an extra $2,000 per year. So over the 10 year period, you're talking $20,000, the cost of a new machine. That's just the cost of servicing versus not servicing. And then of course, you've got the, the ancillary cost, um, you know, the breakdown, the downtime, your customers are getting upset because things are not delivered on time and the knock on. Um, a, a quick example, we recently did another visit to a, um, a large laundromat mm. in, um, in Delhi, in India. And we were there a year ago and we gave a report to the customer about the airflow, 
the water condition filters and it needed to be changed. And it needs to do this on a, on a quarterly basis. And we got a call a, last week to go back again. Nothing had changed. What would have required two small filters, vacuuming of a tumble dryer, ended up as a $1,500 bill to replace items and to send technicians. So it's just a quick cost. That's why that machine servicing is so important, you know, um, yeah. purely from a financial perspective for the machine and a financial perspective for the business. Yeah. It really is important. Rightly said so. And, you know, you were talking a bit about being more energy conscious and, you know, uh, to get in more uh, environmentally friendly methods into the laundry. So can you give us a little bit more insight on how one can actually be more energy efficient, uh, especially at the design stage of the laundry? Yeah, you know, living in, in dry parts of Africa um, and in the, in the region, the Middle East, and we know that in India, there's areas of, of you know, very drastic water shortage. The design stage is critical. And what we can do to plan water reuse, to plan energy efficiency right at the beginning, really does benefit the operator and the owner in the long term. So the first thing we, we always suggest is, Water-wise, you must have storage tanks, okay? Mm -hmm. It stops evaporation through pipes, it stops um, pressure vari variables. It means that the process speeds up. Together with that water, we would suggest water reuse. So an actual storage tank where um, effluent water from the third rinse gets pumped in and is reused after going through a filtration for the pre-rinse of the next cycle. Yeah. That way we can save anywhere between 13 and 22% of the water use. But obviously in a large laundry, that means having a tank with pumps that can accommodate 20 or 30,000 liters. So it must be done at the design stage. And a lot of customers now are, re are using um, exit water from the machine, which is hot, to preheat incoming water, mm -hmm. like a calorifier uh, system. So the hot water goes with a coil, the cooler water passes through, and by the time it gets to the machine, we're also reheating the water. So those are three areas we can work on at the design stage. Um, water reuse, solar, and uh, using hot water to, to preheat incoming water. Yeah. And, and I think environmentally it's sensible and economically it's sensible. You know? yeah. um, but if we look at the lifespan, this project in Namibia, our, our um, return on investment to recover that initial cost was 14 months. Wow. Now, 14 months out of a you know 120 month cycle is really not, yeah. not too drastic. That's true. Now, finally, coming down, you know, to the trends, if we can shed some light on that, you know, what are some of the new developments or trends that you have seen, especially in the market post uh, the onset of the pandemic? It's, it's, quite, um, it's quite strange that there actually hasn't been too many new trends. Mm. What there has been is a huge acceleration of what was a small trend previously. Mm. So, you know, we talk about the healthcare institution. Working in Africa, we've had Ebola. Um, working in, in uh, the Far East, we've had SARS. We've had these infectious diseases before. And you know, in, in many countries around the world, they use a barrier machine in healthcare to separate clean and dirty. Yeah. The uptake of that has not been very fast on a global scale until a year ago. And then it jumped, obviously it jumped hugely. Um, and we've been pushing the concept for, for a number of years, but it really has taken off. So the, the additional, um, tools that a, custom, that, a, that a service provider can offer in terms of tracking and tracing linen through the laundry process, tracking and tracing a wash cycle to make sure that the linen has actually been in you know, an 82 degree bath for 12 minutes and it, requ it received X number of grams of, of a certain chemical so that when it comes out, we can prove that it is hygienically clean um, not necessarily sterile, but certainly hygienically clean, mm. and that it's um, 
you know, colony forming um, microbes or whatever will be absolutely minimal. And so the so type of machine and the technology of the machine um, have really, really taken off. And then what we found is the demand for these machines has spread outside of just the healthcare institution. Now what we find is even customers in laundromats are requesting the ability to prove that that water was hot enough to kill bugs. Mm. Um, so that, that is a trend that really has spread. And I think also the, the level of intelligence in our industry has jumped immeasurably in the last 10 years. Um, like you say, people have always considered laundry to be a simple business. Yeah. You know, dirty laundry in, clean in and out. But how we manage that process uh, has become a lot more involved and there's a lot more requirements around and a lot more skills in the industry, which is great to see. So even from people working in the laundry, a laundry manager now has a set level of skills that are required and those skills are growing every day. Mm. And we're learning more and more and our customers are telling us what we need, what we need to offer them. And we're coming back to the customers, working with detergent suppliers, and the whole industry is becoming much more professional. Um, yeah. And it's a pleasure to work with it, it really is. Yeah. Are we seeing a lot more automation as well coming in? Because I see a lot of other sectors who are trying to become more touchless, more, you know, um, bringing in more innovation that helps them make a very frictionless service, as we say. So is that something that we're seeing out here as well? We're starting to. Um, you know, the, the big commercial laundries have had for, for a number of years um, yeah. automated systems that are pretty touchless. You yeah. know, um, it is becoming more and more into OPLs. And we're working with a number of providers to, to offer water-soluble bags, um, color coding bags, so that literally from housekeeping, they could go to a hotel room on the fifth floor, they strip the bed, strip the towels, they go into a bag, sealed, and then that bag actually gets put in its entirety into the machine. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. the, the linen is tagged, the bag is tagged, the machine reads the tag, and it comes out the other, other end. Bag is dissolved, linen has been washed, and it's been touched by one person. Yeah. Whereas previously, we would have housekeeping, then we would have someone sorting the laundry, then we would have someone loading the machine, then another person unloading. So we've removed those three points of contact. And there's a lot of that innovation is happening as well. Um, yeah. And then we're also finding that a lot of customers want to come to a machine and know that it is sanitized already. Hmm. So um, a lot of the programs now start with a sanitization program. So before you even load the machine, you can just press a quick start button and it will spray a high temperature chemically uh, with chemicals dissolved in the water through the machine to sanitize it before even loading. Thank you so much, Mr. Tim. Of course, uh, we are running short of time, but uh, I do hope that we have started a good dialogue where people do you know, come out and encourage them to ask you more questions and you will be available at the platform uh, or your team will be there as well uh, in order to answer any of the questions uh, that may come up during this conversation. So thank you again. And uh, thank, you. thank you very much for coming. Yeah.